Do you hate going to conferences, seminars, or group meetings? You don't know anyone, and it seems like everyone else connected. You perhaps not go due to this? Big mistake. We've got you covered with our guide to conquering these moments of solitude. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, fear not. I'm going to arm you with 10 straightforward yet impactful questions you can use to be fearless networking at industry and professional events. We've also got a bonus for you, some fun ice-breaking questions you can use once you've been. There's absolutely no reason for you not to attend just because you don't know anyone. Make sure you stick around until the end when I share the one simple trick that will make all your new contacts want to meet up with you at the next event. So let's get started. When I'd been working for a few years, my companies had a few memberships in what was then called the New York Treasury Management Association. It's now part of the Association for Financial Professionals. The monthly meetings usually featured an industry thought leader and were held during lunch, usually at a nice restaurant or private club. So getting invited not only meant learning something new, it also meant having a nice meal. So I was always thrilled when I got invited, which was not often. So at this one particular time, I had been invited, and I was heading over with my boss. And we were about a half a block away from the club, and he turned and he said to me, now when we get there, we're not going to sit together. I suspect he was looking for a new job, and he didn't want me to hear. And I was horrified. I didn't know anyone. But when we arrived, he waved, and he headed off for his drink. Luckily, or so I thought at the time, I supplied another one of my co-workers and made a beeline over for him. Big mistake on my part. Why? Because just as my boss intended to network, if I had been smart enough, I could have done the same. But I didn't have a clue about how to network. So instead, I took the safer route and met no one new that day. Fast forward a number of years, and I took a job as a newsletter editor. Part of my job was to attend conferences and report on them. Conferences where I knew no one. Again, when lunch came that first day, I was in a deep panic. Who was I going to eat with? It was probably desperation, but it hit me. I had two choices. I could stay in my room, maybe order room service and not meet anyone. Or two, I could bite the bullet, get over my fear, go down, sit at a table with strangers and make an attempt to talk with people I didn't know. Luckily, I chose the latter. And after a few years in that job, I always knew people at these annual conferences I attended each year. Plus, I got to know some really interesting people, and I got some good stories for the newsletter. What I didn't do, and now realize I should have done, was go prepared with some questions to ask when networking, especially those first few years, to start conversations with complete strangers. So I've done a little research, so when you find yourself at one of these events, and you find yourself in a group, you'll have a little easier time striking up a conversation with a stranger who might be a potential boss, or even better yet, turn into a good friend. I've broken the questions into two groups, some general questions that will work in any type of a setting and some that are more job related with examples from the accounts payable, accounting and finance space. It goes without saying that you don't bring up politics, religion or any other controversial topic. Also, always when you ask these questions, ask open ended questions, not something that can be answered with a yes or a no unless you have a very good follow-up question. So our general icebreaker, icebreaker quest one, do you have a personnel problem, an issue with an employee who's continually late, maybe two st staffers who don't get along, or perhaps someone who makes a lot of mistakes? Ask if they've had this issue and if they've had how they've handled it. Have they tried one of the free AI tools like ChatGPT? If so, what was their experience with it? Do they have any suggestions or recommendations? Just about everyone has tried one of these tools, so the odds of you getting a no answer are pretty slim. But, you know, it could happen, so be prepared with a number of questions. Question number three. If it is lunchtime or after a session, you can ask what session they attended, what they liked, and what they didn't like. If there are still a few sessions to go, you can ask which ones they plan to go to and why. Now, of course, with this one, you need to be prepared for somebody to grunt and say something like, oh, I don't know. I haven't looked at the schedule yet. Or you can ask people, how did they come to be working in the field? Sometimes you'll get a really funny answer. One guy told me that he got into accounts payable because he spoke Italian. Now those are not typically two skill sets required for the same job. And of course you need to be prepared with your own story. Question number five, what is the best piece of career advice you have ever gotten at work? 
okay and again be prepared with your own now let's take a look at some of the job related icebreakers and as i said we're going to use accounts payable accounting finance examples but you can modify if you've got a more applicable example in your case so the first question in this session what erp system are you using if it is the same one as you you can ask about a particular problem you are having and if not you can ask what they like or what they don't like about it question number two ask where they stand on their automation journey for the accounts payable function or accounts receivable function or whatever if they say they're using a particular solution ask what they like and what they don't like about it if they say they're using one that you're thinking about using then you can ask whatever in-depth questions you have you can also ask would they mind if you followed up with them afterwards so it gives you you know a lot of things to ask about next one you could ask what's the one thing you wish could be automated in your job and why and you should be ready to share what you would automate especially if you can come up with something a little amusing like you know my boss's instructions for doing just about anything i'd make them shorter because you know he goes on forever question number four what's an underrated skill everyone can benefit from again be prepared to answer that from your own experience especially if you have something that's a little different like so you might say you know learning to turn a deaf ear and you can tell why that or diplomacy or whatever try and make it fun though now before you go look up a few recent payment fraud or embezzlement stories and then you can ask if they've heard about them what they think they could be could be could have been done to prevent it before we get to the fun icebreaker questions and to that simple tip that superstar networkers use if you're getting any value from this talk i'd love it if you would leave us a thumbs up or hit the like button it lets me know i'm on the right track track for this channel and should create more talks like this thanks to everyone who liked the session now as promised a few fun interesting icebreaker questions that you can use but only use these if the person you are talking to seems re receptive and it's probably not a good idea to start with any of these but you know after you've been sitting chatting for a while so the first one tell me about your best boss and or your worst boss or what was the best job you ever had or what was the worst and again be ready your own stories if you're going to talk about the worst job try to make it humorous I know if you ask my daughter who now does SEO she'd probably say that the best job she ever had was when she was left in charge of the ice cream shop in the town we lived in over the summer during her high school years she loved that job but sadly it paid something like 25 cents over minimum wage so it was not exactly a sustainable long-term career for her what would it take to get you to give up your smartphone for a month or even a week again be ready with your answer next question would you rather live 100 years in the past or 100 years in the future and why and for fun if you're game would you answer this in the comments i'll start by posting my own answer tell me something about yourself that will surprise me or what is something interesting we would not know about you just by looking at your linkedin profile for me that answer would be something like i share my home with my husband and several hundred plants i've given up counting how many because i really don't want to know what is the most challenging part of your job again you'll be ready with your answer now i promised this simple trick used by networking superstars so when someone's talking listen attentively to whatever that person uh, is saying nod your head in agreement and when they finish especially if you can't think of anything else to ask or you don't have any other questions say something like tell me more about that or that sounds interesting tell me more it's that simple you can do it it's not just attending events and networking at them that sends people into a cold sweat it's the whole issue of growing your networking networking strategies whether it's professional networking or social networking but there are some really simple ways to get started and to dip your toes in the water we did a short talk on that which you can watch right now using the link that has appeared on your youtube screen and is in the description good luck